The increasingly fast pace of society, which we constantly find ourselves navigating, is not at all excluded from the workplace. Our jobs are now more demanding and with way more complex challenges to confront every single day. Responsibilities stack up and you inevitably find yourself needing to deal with a lot more stuff than you can often handle. And this naturally brings with it feelings of anxiety and overwhelming. Imposter syndrome creeps in and feelings of inadequacy tend to arise. If you're a software engineer like me, this can take many forms, but a common one that I often hear and can really relate to is transitioning from exclusively coding as an individual to more of a driver of different work streams. And even if you're not an engineer and you weren't coding before, it's very likely that this pattern translates well to your own field. This often results in having the ball in your court from multiple fronts. And that's a skill we should theoretically learn in college, but in my experience, facing this in the workplace is an entirely different thing. Whatever the root cause of these feelings is for you, we've all experienced them at some point, and the consequences range from forgetfulness, confusion, difficulty to focus, and decreased problem-solving skills, which definitely doesn't help with getting on top of your to-do list. I am making this video because I felt like this a lot these past couple of weeks, and after a couple of tweaks to my routine, I feel a lot more at ease, and even if I'm putting the same hours as before, I feel like my productivity skyrocketed, so let me share with you what I did. While I was thinking about how to mitigate this, I remembered one of the first books on productivity that I ever read, and that was Getting Things Done by David Allen, also known as GTD. Now, a lot of people tend to follow that methodology religiously, but I never really got a lot of value from being super strict with it. However, its basic principles are actually quite good, and they are capture, clarify, organize, review, and engage. And following David Allen's recommendation, you can implement these in any tool of your choice, including pen and paper. My choice, however, is an app you probably heard before called to do is capture. This is probably the step that helped me the most in getting a hold of the multiple work streams I was handling. Capture essentially means getting stuff out of your head and into a system that you trust. Trusting that all of the important stuff you need to follow up on is somewhere safely stored where you can easily access it frees up your mind from the anxiety that comes from trying to keep track of everything in your head. I like to think of this step as Dumbledore's pensive in the Harry Potter series. Now the most important part about this step is putting a hold on judgment. I try to write anything that comes to mind that might bother me in the slightest, even if it appears appears to be completely unimportant stuff. This is okay because you can always organize or discard stuff later. Now, how exactly this stuff that you get out of your head looks like kind of depends on your own preference, but given that I can't pull them out of my mind with a wand, I try to at least type them in as to-dos, because it keeps my follow-ups as actionable as possible, and even if I don't have a concrete to-do around something that's bothering me, I'll write it up anyways and later figure out any next steps. Now, just capturing stuff is not enough, so let's take a look at what we would do next. Clarify and organize. David Allen splits these two into different steps, but in practice, I find that I don't benefit too much from treating these differently. Clarifying and organizing essentially means finding concrete next actions for everything you just captured and sorting them into relevant projects or categories, just like a sorting hat. Now, our lives are much more complex than Hogwarts houses, and I found that I struggled with GTD's definition of a project. So, to maintain a low overhead in my to-do system, I treat a project and a category interchangeably. For me, this just means any large bucket of to-dos that are somewhat related. Now, how granular you choose to make these buckets is, again, a matter of personal preference. The rule of thumb I try to keep is having my projects detailed enough to give me context about what a work stream is about, but generic enough that it's easy to maintain so that it doesn't have me abandoning my system just from my natural tendency to follow the path of least resistance. Engage. David Allen lists this step last, but I feel like for my own system it belongs in this order because as soon as my system is organized, I'm ready to start working. The way I approach this is by, in the morning, picking out the couple of tasks that I want to get done and assign its due date to that specific day. Now, I keep two principles when choosing the tasks I intend to get done on any given day. First, aiming high. I want to add a couple of extra tasks, if possible, as a stretch goal. And second, going easy on me. I want to be totally at peace with myself if I need to push some of them to the next day. That allows me to try and maximize how productive I am, but limits the anxiety that I get if life gets in the way, as it often happens, or if my priorities shift during the day to either do something else or just get some rest. Review. This last step is what aims at making your system sustainable in the long term. When you're engaging and making progress towards your tasks, it's likely that your system's gonna get messy. Just like your kitchen when you cook or your wand when you fight a mountain troll. <laughs> For that reason, I find it important to set aside a couple of minutes every week to try and review the current tasks that I have in the system and either prioritize them accordingly or discard anything that is no longer relevant. 
Life is complicated and the demands that it imposes on us are not slowing down. I relate to this a lot as I progress in my own software engineering career, but I'm sure I'm not alone with these feelings. So trying to keep a clear head has been critical for me these past couple of weeks as my list of responsibilities grew. I really hope you found this useful as well and I would love to know what some of you do to stay on top of your shifting priorities and work stream. And if you're interested in how to drive clarity to maximize your impact not only in your personal tasks but also across your team at work, be sure to also check out my video on that here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.